Hello and welcome to Stand With Us TV Live. Stand With Us is working around the clock supporting Israel and fighting anti-Semitism. Thank you for joining us. We have a great show for you today. Coming up, I'll be joined by the current president of Volunteers for Israel, who is the author of two books about his experiences volunteering with the IDF, that's the Israel Defense Forces. He recently released the book, A Passion for Israel, Adventures of a Sar El Volunteer. A retired U.S. attorney, Mark Werner has dedicated the last 18 years of his life volunteering on IDF bases around Israel and has no plans to stop. The son of a Holocaust survivor, Mark believes that it is an obligation for Jews to strengthen and support the state of Israel. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce Mark Werner. Thank you for being with us. We want to hear all about your book, all about your 18 years of experience, and of course, what motivates you. So why don't we begin with that? What, what, so you're a volunteer, you've been a volunteer for the IDF for 18 years. We want to hear about what you do. We want to hear how others can become involved. And you're going to tell us all about that. But first, please tell us what motivates you. What's okay. your, what's your background? Um, my, my background is that my dad was a Holocaust survivor and he imbued in me the importance of the, of the Jewish homeland as a place for Jews. Um, and um, I, I just got involved. It turns out that some of my father's, uh, most of my father's family was murdered in, in the Holocaust, but a couple got out and made it to Israel. A couple got out and made it to the States. And I learned over time that um, I have Israeli relatives that I, I just reconnected with back in the 1990s. And I started following Israeli news, and then, then the Intifada hit, and 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 uh, they were blowing up restaurants and buses in Israel, and it got me very depressed. Um, and then something happened that really motivated me to to take some action. Most of my Israeli family lives in the Netanya area, and uh, you may remember back in 2002 there was the Netanya massacre, where uh, Palestinian terrorists broke into a hotel in in Netanya and massacred all the people there uh, in their preparations for a Passover seder. That really got me motivated to do something. So I put together a business plan and sent it to the president of the North American Federations, uh, Jewish Federations, proposing that we create an organization in America to send volunteers to Israel to take the place of soldiers to do routine work on the bases to free up those soldiers to patrol the streets against terrorists. And I got back a response that said, well, such an organization already exists in, in Israel. It's called Sarel around the world. And in the US, the partner organization is called Volunteers for Israel. So I decided to put my money where my mouth is, and I volunteered in the fall of 2002. And I remember on the flight over to Israel thinking to myself, I must be crazy. I'm just a lawyer. I don't know anything about the military. I've never been in the military, no background. I don't even speak Hebrew except maybe a tiny bit. But when I got there, I discovered there were lots of people just like me. Um, over 4,000 people a year volunteer in this program to work on military bases. And they're not actually in the Israeli army. They're just volunteers, civilian volunteers. Um, both men and women, both Jews and non-Jews, um, do this work. And uh, over the history of the program, over 160,000 people have volunteered to do this work. So I volunteered Amazing. that year and, and I really liked it. So I came back a year later and tried it again and I just fell in love with it. So I got hooked Amazing. on that. Amazing. Amazing, yeah. Mark. So uh, that that is, it's interesting that a pivotal moment for you with all of your own history and growing up in the shadow of the Holocaust like I did, uh, so you had all that, you know, inside of you and then came 2002 for you, which the Passover massacre, by the way, when stand with us was just in it, in its infancy, uh, we, we actually, we're now 20 years old, but, uh, when we first began, that was towards the beginning of stand with us. We, we, uh, we were founded in 2001, but in 2002, when the Passover massacre happened, we actually hosted a rally and 17,000 people just like you and me showed up on the streets of Los Angeles to, to just, I mean, everybody was just, they didn't know what to do. So here you took that emotion 
that response and you put it into action. So when you say you went to to work uh, at the at the IDF bases, what exactly do you do there? What 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 is it that you put your hands on? Well, the, the work that we do is non-combat work. Obviously, we're civilian volunteers. We do mostly logistics. We pack combat gear. We pack medical supplies. We repair communications equipment. We do whatever whatever they ask us to do. And in doing that, we each volunteer replaces an Israeli soldier, and that frees up that soldier to take on more serious duties, like protecting the borders of the country or patrolling the streets against terrorism. So it's a variety of work that they give us, mostly in logistics. So logistics. So can you give us some examples of that kind of logistic? Are you able to share those? Sure, sure, sure. Um, I, uh, I've packed in on many bases combat gear. A combat pack for, for a combat soldier has a certain certain types of equipment in it and, and has to be checked and, and opened up. And the bad equipment has to be taken out. New equipment has to be put in, and especially after a war like they just had. Uh, there's a special need for volunteers because all the equipment comes back from the soldiers who've been in the field. They dump it on the bases. Somebody has to go through it, take out the stuff that's ruined, and and repack everything. And the volunteers do that. We do a very good job of packing combat gear. We also do a very good job of packing medical supplies for the Israeli army. So when people come, when they arrive, um, who trains them? Do other volunteers train them? How does that work? Well, each each um, the volunteers are divided up into teams by language, like an English-speaking group, a French-speaking, Russian-speaking. And each volunteer group is put under the direction of an Israeli soldier, a Sarel soldier, usually a young woman called a Sarel Madracha. And we take our direction from our Sarel Madracha. And, and she gives us work to do and she tells us how to do it. And we work side by side with the soldiers. We, we eat in the mess hall with the soldiers. We live in the barracks with the soldiers and we work side by side with them. It's a very rewarding experience. So is there an age limit uh, for people who want to come and volunteer? If they're able-bodied, is there an age limit? There's a lower age limit. You have to be at least 17 or 16 if you're with a, a parent or guardian. There's no upper age limit. In fact, I've met I've, I've met the oldest uh, volunteer I've met was 94. I love that. I, I love that. I have to tell you. So, hey, out there, what are you doing? <laughs> Everybody can be involved and there isn't an age limit. I think that's very, very important, Mark. Mm -hmm. I think it really is a welcoming and inclusive, important issue. So there's something for everybody to do. So what are some of the elderly people, what could they do? Uh, especially packing medical supplies, because medical supplies are light. There's nothing heavy about it. And they don't overtax or overwork the volunteers. A lot of the, a lot of the senior citizens end up on the medical supply base because that work is, they just need hands. They just need hands. And, and older people can do the same thing that soldiers can do, just as, just as efficient, just as efficient. Amazing and very inviting, I think, to, to a lot of people listening to this. Speaking of which, we have people all over the world listening and joining us right now. So if you can tell us where you're from and let us know if you have a question and we will get through as many questions as we can in the time that we have together. So, Mark, in all the years that you were volunteering, uh, is there anything special that sticks out in your mind, some special story you want to share with us? Well, um, it, it's very it's very appreciative um, to receive expressions of appreciation from, it's very rewarding to receive expressions of appreciation from the, from the soldiers we work side by side with. And on one particular base, uh, an Air Force base, we were working on this base and the base was way behind in its work. The soldiers were working 12 hour shifts. They couldn't get home to see their families because the work was so heavy. And when the volunteers showed up, we, we actually eliminated their backlog to the point that they were dismissing the soldiers early so they could go home every day. They were commuter soldiers in the Tel Aviv area. They could go home every day an hour early and that gave them an extra hour with their families. So we learned later that behind our backs, they were calling us angels from God because we were giving them that special precious hour, extra hour with their families. They called us angels from God. It was very rewarding to hear that. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. So if someone wants to get involved, wh what are the steps they need to take? What what should they do? Okay. Uh, we have a website. Volunteers for Israel's website is vfi-usa.org. You get on the website, you learn about the program. There's an application process. Um, you fill out online. There's also a medical form. You have to have your doctor sign to say that you're basically able-bodied uh, and you're not on crutches or you don't have a, a lung problem or something like that. 
and uh, and it goes through a process, and we vet everyone, and we uh, actually interview all the first timers. We go through an interview process with them. That's what we do here in in America, and then we submit your names to SARL in Israel, and then you're you're accepted, and uh, you, you go through a, a mini SARL screen, but it's a very mini screen compared to what we do. So maybe we can put that uh, website on the screen. Can you say it again, please? VFI-USA.org. VFI VFI for Volunteers for Israel dash USA dot org. So can you tell us approximately how many people volunteer each year and where they come from? Uh, we, we get worldwide about 4,000 volunteers a year. They're from countries all over the world. Uh, and as a result, I know people all over the world I've volunteered with. So if I ever go to Buenos Aires or Milan or New Zealand, or Sweden, I, I have friends there. I can uh, I keep up with them. I can go and visit them if I want because I've served with them on a base. And there's a certain camaraderie that develops between the volunteers when you 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 know work hard and sweat on the base. And the same camaraderie develops between the volunteers and the soldiers. It's a very valuable, precious thing. But it's it's a great feeling, I have to say. You are going to tell us um, another story about how much the volunteers are appreciated by the Israeli soldiers. Tell us. Okay, um, there are two basic benefits to the volunteers that, that the volunteers bring to Israel. One is the work that we do because we free up Israeli soldiers from more serious work. But the second is the morale boost it brings to the Israeli soldiers to see volunteers come from all over the world to support them and their country. And so my book uh, has full of stories of this, but one example is I was assigned to a, uh, a paratrooper reservist base at the very end of the second Lebanon war. And when I arrived on the base, soldiers were just coming off the fighting front in Lebanon back to the base to drop off their equipment and rest for a few days before they went home. And the first evening I was there, I had dinner in the mess hall sitting with the platoon of soldiers who were, had just come out of Lebanon after three weeks of intense fighting. And they were exhausted soldiers. They were very tired. You could see how they just slumped over their food plates, barely eating. And I happened to sit with their platoon sergeant, a young man named Danny. He was the best English speaker. And so he engaged me in conversation. And at one point he pointed to me and the other volunteers in the mess hall and asked, what are you people doing on our base? And I explained that we were volunteers from around the world who'd come to Israel to show our support for the country by working on military bases. So he turned to his soldiers and he translated that into Hebrew. And all of a sudden, these exhausted, slumped over soldiers perked up and began speaking to each other in very fast Hebrew, which of course I don't understand. And I asked Danny, what are they saying? And he said, they're saying, hearing this is sweeter than breathing the air. Hearing this is sweeter than breathing the air. That's how our presence boosted the morale of the soldiers. That's amazing. That's amazing. It reminds me, when I was a, a kid and the 1967 war broke out, uh, a group of us packed boxes for Israeli soldiers. Uh, little tiny like bakery boxes filled with, you know, treats and, and a letter from each one of us. So these hundreds of boxes went to Israeli soldiers at the, uh, probably at the, they probably received it at the end of the 67 war. And uh, the morale boost was incredible. We actually got a lot of letters in return and they were tear stained letters uh, of appreciation of the kids that, that actually sat and packed these boxes and how much that meant to them. So I understand fully, I actually, I, I know, I know how this comes across to them that support that they're not alone. Yes. So to, let's talk about your book, A Passion for Israel, Adventures of Sar -El Volunt a Sar El Volunteer. Uh, tell, us, tell us about your journey, your 18-year journey as a Sar El Volunteer. Well, I happen to have a terrible memory, so I started keeping a travel journal every time I volunteer um, because I just want to write down all the, the fascinating stories I hear from the other volunteers and the soldiers and the experiences. They're just worthwhile writing down. And I started sending out my journals to my co-volunteers after each stint, and they wrote back to me and said, this is terrific stuff. Why don't you compile it into a book? And so this is the second of the two books I've written about my volunteer experiences. And it's full of stories about the soldiers and about the volunteers. And you hear stories from all over the world, amazing, amazing stories from some of the people who volunteer. It's just wonderful. And um, I just compile them into a book. And it's also to provide uh, an opportunity for people to see what this is about. Uh, Volunteers for Israel is not very well known in, in America. It's actually better known in France. Uh, and I wanted to sort of publicize this volunteer opportunity because it's, it's a terrific opportunity 
to make a personal contribution to the state of Israel this way. And the purpose of the book is to is to make it more well known. Fantastic. Uh, so if you're thinking about you out there in the world watching us right now, if you're thinking about volunteering, this is a great book for you to read. Uh, you can you can read about uh, Mark's journey and his adventures and things that stick out in his mind uh, about volunteering and the rewards of it. Uh, let, let, me have, just, sure. let me add one more thing. Um, I volunteered five times with my son. Um, and those are my best volunteer experiences because I did them with my son. And we had a chance to create a set of shared memories about the people we met and the situations we faced and the obstacles we overcame. And so if people are ever considering this program, think about who you'd like to volunteer with because who you volunteer with can make it a much more memorable and rich experience. So I've had seen people volunteer with their best friends. I've seen mothers and fathers volunteer with their sons and daughters. People volunteer with their spouses. I've even seen grandparents volunteer with their grandchildren. It's a wonderful opportunity to create a set of lifelong memories. Before we leave that that particular topic, can you tell us what the accommodations look like? What what where do you guys stay when you're volunteering? Okay, the the, the write up about it says the accommodations are Spartan. That's what the, the word they use is Spartan. <laughs> you live in the barracks with the soldiers. You have accommodations that are like the soldiers. You may be in a room with two, four, six people at the same time. Um, sharing a common bathroom. You don't have your own bathroom. Uh, you eat in a mess hall with the soldiers. It's a communal sort of eating. Uh, it's no different than the barracks that the, uh, the soldiers are in. And sometimes you're with soldiers. I, I bunked once with a Bedouin soldier. Um, I, I bunked, bunked with lots of other people, uh, volunteers and soldiers as well. It's, uh, it's, it's sort of like my, my wife describes it as a Boy Scout camp for adults, okay, uh, in, in terms of accommodations. So it's not going to be fancy. No, it's going to be all. it's going to be campy. Yeah, it's for it's for those kind of people who would be OK camping. But if you want a five star hotel in Israel, don't volunteer in this program. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not what this is. But very fulfilling emotionally. That's for sure. So we have some questions coming in and I want to be sure to get a few of them at least. Uh, Sophie from London. She's asking, what keeps you inspired to keep volunteering with the IDF every single summer? What, what keeps you in there? Um, what inspires me is what I mentioned before, the camaraderie that develops between the volunteers, amongst the volunteers, and between the volunteers and the soldiers. They appreciate you so much, um, and, and you miss that. Uh, that's what I come back for every year. You miss that. You know that you're contributing to Israel because you can tell it from the soldiers. You can tell it from how they interact with you, how they thank you how they appreciate you. It's a wonderful feeling. And that's what keeps me coming back. So Mohammed from Detroit is asking, uh, what are some of the challenges that you've dealt with? Uh, any challenges with volunteering? One of the challenges is a funny one. You show up on a base, uh, people my age, you know, uh, and the soldiers look at you and they say, you could be my grandfather. And they don't want to give you heavy work. They don't want to give you a lot of work. So they give you enough work to keep you busy for maybe two hours. And then you get it done in two hours and you say, okay, give me more. And they're shocked that you get it done so fast because we, the volunteers are very motivated to be productive. And then they give you a little more and a little more. And it takes them about a week sometimes to figure out you can be as productive as, the sold, as a soldier can be, okay? Just because you're in your 60s or 70s or 80s doesn't mean you can't get as much work, push as much work out the door as they can. It takes them a while to figure that out. So they have to learn to trust you. They have yep. to learn to, to see your potential, but you show it to them so they can get it. Right. Uh, from, from Mickey in Johannesburg, uh, what is the security clearance that people need to go through uh, when they want to volunteer? Um, like I said, at least in the U.S., I don't know how it is in, in other countries. Uh, you get you get personally interviewed by someone from the organization. Um, and then once you pass our, our vetting process and our medical process, your name is sent to Sarel in Israel, and if they if you're on a list of you know don't don't let this person in, then you'll you'll be uh, pulled out. But otherwise, you're you're allowed in. Um, they they do check people's names to make sure they're people who haven't caused problems before in the program. So there is a vetting process that goes on both in the U.S., your home country, as well as in Israel. Thank you, uh, Ilan from Guatemala. Uh, we're having a lot of uh, anti-Semitic activity. Uh, on campuses really around the world. Do you have a message for students about the anti-Zionism or anti-Semitism? Yes, we have that in the US as, as well, unfortunately. What I would tell college students is don't believe what you read in the social media. Come to Israel and see it yourself. 
it's a very open society. It's a very diverse society. Um, you see people in the army who are uh, of all backgrounds. You see Druze, you see Bedouins, you see Ethiopians, you see Hungarians, you see it's a melting pot. And the country is a free country. I've, I've actually attended twice um, the, the gay pride parade in Tel Aviv, which is the largest gay pride parade in, in the Middle East. In fact, it's the only gay pride parade in the, in the Middle East. I'm not gay, but I, I enjoy watching it. Um, it's a very free and open society. Come to Israel and see what it's like. Don't believe what you read in the media. That's good advice. Very, very good advice. So our time is nearly up, and I just wanted to ask you, is there anything else, another story? Is there anything you want to share with us before we let you go today, Mark? Okay, well, there, there are some opportunities I wanted to mention to people. Uh, some people like to volunteer and do something in addition. So we have programs where we can volunteer and do touring. You can, we have programs we can do volunteering and do archaeology. We even have a college program, which partially subsidizes the airfare to get there. So we have a variety of options that you can find on our website for people of all, of all backgrounds. But I, I really encourage you to check this out because instead of sitting on a beach somewhere in your vacation time, this is something you can do that you can come back and talk to your kids and your grandkids and you can brag about to your neighbors. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful adventure opportunity. Let's put it that way. And my book, my book describes it that way. So I hope you read my book. I hope you enjoy my book and I hope you're inspired by it to, to volunteer. I bet you have a lot of fantastic pictures. I do. They're in the book. Some of them are in the book and I have others as well. Okay. Uh, do a lot of people when they volunteer uh, do a pre vacation in Israel or touring or post? Is that yes. how it works usually? Tell yes. us about that. A lot of people combine it with, with something else, visiting family, touring the country. And like I said, we have our own touring package too, for people who want to take advantage of it. They don't just come to volunteer. They come here and they, they come to Israel and they might volunteer for one, two or three weeks and then add on something. It might be just seeing the sites or just traveling around the country or, or whatever. You're the president of another organization. Um, before we leave, can you tell us about that other organization? I'm the president of Volunteers for Israel. Uh, not another organization, Volunteers for Israel. Volunteers for Israel is the U.S. partner for Sorrel. Okay. Oh, okay. We, we, sorry for the confusion. We recruit and promote the SARL program in the United States, and we vet and and, and uh, review the applications, and then we send the people's names on to SARL. So it's just a different name, but we're a partner. We're not part of SARL. We're a equal partner with SARL. So we just want to make sure that we have a partnership with you, uh, and I hope that is uh, in the works and blooming and uh, getting going, and that you're in touch with our Israel office and uh, let us know how we can help you because this sounds like such an exciting hands-on opportunity for people of all ages. Uh, we, we are in touch, in fact, with your Israel, your Israel office, and we plan to use uh, some people in your Israel office with our college students to give them orientation. Fantastic, fantastic. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. God bless you for everything you're doing for the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Thank you. Thank you, Roz. Thank you so much for joining us today. You do not want to miss our next show on June the 6th, when we will be celebrating our 20 year birthday at Stand With Us. Don't forget we're live at this time every second Sunday. And between those live Sundays, watch the great shows you've missed, like our interviews with Ambassador Michael Oren, Tracy Ann Oberman, Senator Joe Lieberman, Colonel Richard Kemp, Professor Judea Pearl, Ambassador Danny Danon, and so many others. Go to standwithus.tv, where you'll find a ton of great video content available at no cost any time of day. Don't forget, if you love the work of Stand With Us and you want to support it, go to standwithus.com forward slash donate. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you for standing with us and Shalom from Stand With Us.